all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back-to-back -back update and information as it is hot uh, in case it's your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel kindly go ahead and subscribe like comment share and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news is dropping you'll be the first to take it let's go down to the news proper as it is hot a don't share uh, for the Obodo, this one they happen uh, between the the Biafra Dragon uh, militant. Uh, they say the people uh, don't carry their bombio go hit uh, military T gun bath in Bakasi Peninsula. <laughs> uh, those boys, those boys, where they did by para make I show you uh, the heading. Waiting the uh, the Biafra Dragon militant uh, tell uh, Cameroonian government make you see. <laughs> Uh, waiting, uh, well, make we go for the news first. They say, yes, it took Biafra Navy 24 hours to recapture the waters. We are calling on Cameroon to pull out their terrorist army from Bakasi immediately or we will expand our offensive in defense of Bakasi. <laughs> uh, this this uh, blooded Biafrans that live within the Bakasi Peninsula where Nigeria considered to uh, Cameroon has uh they have been standing for a long time fighting for their right and they have refused to give up on this fight uh, because they believe that uh, that bekasi peninsula belongs to them and as it is uh the the cameroonian forces invaded there but immediately within 24 hours they recaptured the area dispersed the the cameroonian navy and now they are giving warning to Cameroonian government to make sure that uh, they would draw their uh, soldiers to avoid taking more territory along that side. They say the Biafra Dragon militants don't bomb military Tigon battle in Bakasi Peninsula. He said retains control of oil quarters in a <laughs> They say militant group Dragon Fighter Marine has blown a military gun bat belonging to the Cameroonian forces. The Rapid Intervention Battalions, BIR, and a Dabato subdivision of Bakasi Peninsula. The group reportedly stormed Atabong East on Sunday morning, 24 hours after Cameroon Allied Military Unit launched a retaliatory attack on the Black Marine militants to regain control of oil quarters hours after reinforcement. Two soldiers were reportedly killed during the explosion while several others sustained injury. Dragon Fighter Marine and the Black Marine, two deadly groups, are said to be an armed wing of the Biafra Nations League BNL, although the BNL group have not openly aligned itself with the militants. Simon Eber Finland based Biafra separatists described the group as a Biafra Navy. It is believed that the group are receiving aid from Eber. Finland, uh, when I don't see as the Cape Cape they go, uh, it is believed that this group uh, here are being supported by the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic government in exile, Mazi Simon Epa. Uh, it will I say, um, they fight where these boys they fight where they for this side. We say, they say, uh, we know be we know be uh, waiting the they call them, uh, we know be. Uh, uh, Cameroonians, so they know they even talk, say they be Nigerians, <laughs> and that one be the one where they even surprise everybody where they carry them out troop for the story because they themselves they don't complain, say hmm. they say they not be they not be Nigerians, they not be also Cameroonians, say and uh, Nabia France, then be of course, you know, say uh, Nabia Fra government, now nah, carry them uh, give to these people, and it be like say this thing happen uh, during the time of um, Nani. Olusegun Obasanjo will be uh, the former uh, will be the former president of Nigeria. But as it be, the people still they fight. They don't the war. They say uh, make una tell them may they go back. Oh. <laughs> they say make una tell the people uh, may them go back. Uh, the honest and Dibo uh, don't talk on the demolition of properties of Ndibo that is currently going on in Lagos, even though it is assumed that the property demolition is affecting a, a lot of people, as many as possible. But as it be, uh, you're going to say this thing 
and uh, will practically this thing do affect uh, go up come down na ndibo the sufferam uh, if you like if you like believe am uh, if you no like no believe am kwa no uh, but one thing why I go tell you be say eh uh, onyo ma kwa waru na mege ne nya kabalo ma lo nwe eh uh, because na ndibo ndibo asun na tabake ne no 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 eh na tabake ne no no bia me be investment you know eh uh, ma na agwa mo onyi igbo mo onyi igbo akwara akwa ndibo has suffered a lot of things eh uh, as far as Nigeria is concerned and um you find out that most of the people that are buying this land around these places are Igbos. It is only an Igbo man that will move from here and start and whenever the Igbo start developing an area, these areas you see now that the government are fighting for where we are some time ago dump, swamp. But because uh, these people has come, closed this swamp, built houses there, fine fine houses and now the eyes of the government has turned to that direction and the government has come to know that uh, this place uh, you can even uh, do such a thing there and now uh, ndibo themselves are paying the price of what they are doing but come back to anibo and see vast of land go to kigwe go to enugu go to abia go to anambara you see forest you see bushes that uh, these people are supposed to come back and develop things are changing now uh well i i think um you will find out that whatever that is being done to ndibo will surely bring a positive impact yes 1967 to 1960 after rounding up the civil war the nigerian government declared no victor no vanquish and after you declared no victor no vanquish each and every Igbo man was given a 20 pound no matter what you have uh, what you had in nigeria before the civil war uh, after that every man was given 20 pound and this is what Ndibo started their life again with. And as it is today, Ndibo has also become a day of Nigeria. And that is why uh, many people are not happy. Uh, some Ndibo themselves are not even happy with themselves. Especially Ndibo Bundiaka Kotajin Ede. They are not happy because their brothers are surviving and these politicians are using them to bring their brothers down. When I saw you up in the air, I was like, I was Maka no nan patala nya ke si meta nya bi fe o we de mma e maka no nan ga se o o ma kwa waru eh eh no ma lo nwe mi why i don't have much to say the igbo ape social cultural organization or hanese ndi igbo has urged igbo residents in lagos state to consider relocating their investment to the southeast Ohanes Zendibo said elites like Aba, Abakliki, and Onicha have immense potential for growth. Hence, Igbos should consider investing in these areas. A statement by the factional secretary general of Ohanes Zendibo, Okechuku Isiguzoro, reads partly, Ohanes Zendibo encouraged Igbos to seize this moment as an opportunity to recess their investment and consider locating them to the east town region uh, vibrant cities such as Aba, abakliki and onecha offer immense potential for growth and development by investing and building international markets in these areas we can create prosperous economic hubs that will benefit not only the Igbo people but also contribute to the overall development of nigeria on snd Igbo calls on all Igbo residents in lagos to come together and support one another during this challenging period together we can navigate through these difficulties and forge a brighter future for ourselves and generations to come uh, this one is coming from on has uh, they are encouraging ndibo natabano manogare panizi and ebu and ebu they know they carry land come back so how they go fit come back and i am uh, people wait on buy land, buy a house, buy and say as if then they for their papa house. Uh, as if they be now coming back home, it go be a allow <laughs> and a place where them they used to. Some of them, their children, they for school for Bauchi, uh, and uh, Bauchi man supposed to be governor for Igbo part. It just be say, uh, 
country you no know, to balance and of course you know the politics will be said there for nigeria uh, if to say that they even they do and like that by now many places is done for develop another information court reminds ex cbn governor mfl in prison custody uh, the other day they said they don't release this man they don't give him bail on 300 million uh, but as they go he will like say they don't carry the man again uh, okay, MFL, uh, you know, say this thing where they happen to you now. They pray away Nigerians pray for you as you they suffer them that time around January, February. Uh, we've been the one conduct election as people no agree and people can't the fire MFL. Make one notice say, uh, pray away people they pray, you know, they work sometimes it affects people because that time, uh, all Nigerians were really affected and for keeping a whole nation down, uh, in that manner, one uh, other quite very risky. Uh, because na pon kinayin you they eat. Uh, but as they go, a high court of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, has ordered the man of the former governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin MFL in Kuje Correctional Center, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, had arranged MFL on a six-count amended charge bordering on fraud. MFL was arranged before Justice Hamza Mwazu. MFL's counsel Mr. Matthew Buka Sam had moved the application for his bail, but Rotimi Oyedepo, the EFCC counsel, opposed the application on behalf of the EFCC. After counsels in the matter made the argument, Justice Mezu said he needed a little time to study the exhibit supplied by MFL to support his request for bail. Uh, when I don't see as the PT party, the polit politics, they go. Behind matter will be say a confine a concern oga MFL. Now it be say uh I see Oga Bubu day now, Oga Bubu Buharis. Where in the in go the enjoying himself, the chopping rice, but in boy where he send work, in boy still there for DSS since that time. Uh when I don't see as see the be because if you they do bad thing, and only you go carry him as MFL day. If to say in do good thing, him for don't defend himself. Uh, but as he be, he uh, no fit even uh, defend himself. Ogatunubu say very soon local refineries uh, go begin their production soon. We don't know what in, when that one go happen. Uh, whether na the Ledali story, I be lola by whether they take children uh, before they go goes to sleep. But we go to watch in the bias na no one will judge the charger. Uh, no, you pull it on me. What I go? Uh, if to say, uh, on where will judge the charger? Oh, you pull it on me. As they go, uh, Ndibo, especially Ndibo, are suffering from this ongoing demolition that is going on uh, in many places in Nigeria, Lagos, Abuja, demolition everywhere. And most of these buildings that have been demolished are owned by Ndibo. Homeowners deploy scavengers to site as FAJ continues demolition. I don't believe exercise target certain group, says Eze. Amid frustration triggered by their demolished buildings, homeowners on Road 91 and other parts of Festac Phase 2, Abule Odo, Amuo Odofin, Lagos, at the weekend engaged service of scavengers on site to sort out critical building materials like iron rod, roofing sheets, and others left after the demolition by the authority. The Federal Housing Authority, FHA, had last week begun the demolition of 671 houses and um, partially demolished another 744 other illegal developments in the area. President who spoke to the Guardian expressed concern that FHA deployed heavy machines to demolish the building around 4 p.m. on Wednesday last week after giving them a short notice to move out their belongings. Unlike other areas in Lagos where scavengers enter the demolished building site and smile home after looting, homeowners in the area specifically de deploy scavengers to search for valuables and sell to buyers who were with their trucks to buy at cheaper price. Many of the landlords who spoke to the Guardian said the situation has left them confused and drained why others who house are yet to be demolished are hopeful that authorities will not demolish their buildings. One of the landlords who pleaded anonymity was, was seen picking iron drawers in front of his house said, my property was completely demolished, as you can see, 
This one I am living in was partially demolished. Everywhere in the area, houses are being pulled down. A relation of one of the landlords, Daniel Mere, who was also seen picking aluminum roofing sheet and other items from his brother's building, said, We beg people to help us keep our belongings in their houses. Most of our belongings are buried under the rubble. I don't know what to do next. They didn't give us a timeline to leave our building. I came back from the office and saw them demolishing our buildings and they fired tear gas at us. We begged them to remove our property, but they refused. A member of Maranatha Prayer Ministry who was seen gathering what is left from the demolished church building said, I am here to pull out the things. The story of this place is really confusing. I can't say much. Also, Jonathan Eze, who, was a, who is a resident of one of the buildings partially demolished in Stonewater East, said, Right now, for those of us that escaped the total demolition, we are not feeling safe, safe sleeping in our house because the compounds are without fences or gates. People whose houses are not totally demolished or have not been demolished are afraid that the agency may come back to pull down their buildings so that the tenants are looking for other areas to relocate. I just renewed my rent three months ago and I cannot tell my landlord to refund me. And I cannot stay until the rent expire because what happened to other people? The people that escaped the demolition are those built, who built their, their houses years before the government asked people to stop developing. So if the people had listened to the government when they were asked to stop building, this wouldn't have happened. The people didn't wait and fell victim to Omonile. It's a different thing to have money and another thing to know how to invest. Imagine a businessman running his business and some, sell, and some call him that there is a land somewhere but didn't make findings but pay the land I feel they are paying. He added, most of the landlords are not in Nigeria. The people that should be punished are Omonile who sell government lands to people. I can't really blame the government, but this is not the right way to go. Most of the people affected are not the landlord, but the residents. People paid millions for apartments and were thrown out. Some people renewed their rent two weeks ago. Someone just got an apartment and brought his belongings, but couldn't move in because he came late. The next call, call he received was to call to remove what he brought because the house would be going down. Um, when I don't see a city happen, um, on your call, Gabo Bolo, man, I see one of people where they buy house, uh, where they buy land. I beg if you buy land, make you try check whether it's there for position, uh, make you no know, go carry land, buy for position, where you say, um, it go to worry you, you know, go know what you they do. I see the be now, uh, Wahala and Katakata, and Oboni Fele, or Tebwe, and Isalam, Madam Boss, for that side, for that Ama, I see the be. A person where don't invest for many years, uh, you go carry hand for yet, uh, don't they go home? Masi umibo, don't know, uh, on a batacone go, uh, and our lunatana nania. Even though that investing in Lagos gives you a lot of money, uh, but this is not the first, this is not the second, this is not even the third. Uh, I say, I want to know where I want to know where on a bozo where came again, a capital 